Deborah, with her 30 years of being an entrepreneur and creating over seven companies, knows exactly what it means to accept the mission. When you make that decision, when you accept the mission to become a solopreneur, to take yourself and your talents to market, then you embrace a life of not only unlimited possibilities, but also the unknown. It's an elixir of fear and bravery that only someone who's taken the leap really understands. On our show, Deb digs deep with her guest to highlight what you, the listener, wants to know. The stories, the whys, and the hows to navigate the journey to success. Get ready to hear from some of the most incredible mission takers from Generation Z to Boomers. So sit up, perk up, and get ready to be blown away. Now here is your host, Deborah Drummond. Hey everybody, welcome, welcome, welcome back to the Mission Accepted Podcast Show. So grateful for the best podcast audience ever. And you know you are, you know you are. Um, I'm very excited to introduce something, a whole new concept for you guys. Thank you so much for your feedback and your comments and your suggestions and your subscriptions, because that's how we know who to bring into the show for you today. And we're going to do something a little different. But before I introduce my guest today, Melissa McClelland, and I say it like that, because I want to make sure I get her last name right, somewhere between Scotland and Ireland (laughs) is McClelland. Anyways, um, here's something pretty cool. You know that you come on to the show to hear some really invigorating and uplifting stories of, you know, entrepreneurs, entrepreneurs, people in the creative field and people in media, because there's nothing more incredible than listening to someone start something, whether it's a project, a company, um, a passion, turning that passion. And every entrepreneur, and I know because I've been hanging out with them for a really long time, has their own story. And I always say, sometimes we're forced into entrepreneurship. You know, we've got our back against the wall. Sometimes someone makes a suggestion and we're like, that sounds like a good idea. And we go in blind. Sometimes we go to university, get an MBA, scale it out, business plan it out. You know, that usually happens after your first couple of companies. And you're like, maybe I should do something like that. Or your best friend calls you and goes, oh my gosh, I've sold these things on Instagram. And I would love to do it with you. And you're like, yeah, that sounds great. Let's do this on Saturday afternoons. And you start making stuff and, you know, making tea bags. And the next thing you know, you're off, you know, selling your things all and your wares all over the world. Honestly, the, the stories and the opportunities are um, addicting and incredible. But here's the truth. There are some fundamentals that are going to make your business experience better. <laughs> and for someone who's had seven companies, you're going to trust me on that. And for some of you that are out there doing the entrepreneurial world, you know exactly what I'm talking about. There has been a vast, vast range of entrepreneurs coming into the world of, you know, self-ownership, self-proprietorship, what have you, everything from Etsy to Instagram to, you know, going on to GoDaddy and making your website in three hours and taking things out to market, which is why we keep one week open to that Gen Z generation, because never has there been a time where you are finding 15-year-olds and 70-year-olds doing the same business, right, on the same platform, building the same thing that honestly, a lot of times have the same dream, you know, money, freedom, time, freedom, passions. And so I don't think there's ever been a time like this where we can learn from each other. You know, I always say that there's, you know, you need to learn how to close the deal with a handshake and a signature, and you need to learn how to, you know, do a reel, you know, what is that about? So the world of digital marketing has been, for the most part, vast and unpredictable for those of us that don't know about digital marketing. And when, you know, we all know about marketing for our businesses, advertising for our businesses, getting the word out about our businesses. Then there's been a a vast whole thing like sales funnels and artificial intelligence and, you know, this whole thing, Facebook, Instagram, you know, social media platforms, Twitter, and then how do you get your word out on there? And do you do it on one, do it on all 10? And it makes your head spin a little bit because even if this is your era, you know, you may not know the details and it's within the details of doing something. I mean, here's a famous saying that I've said, one of my, you know, God-given gifts is verbiage, right? And so being able to know what to say, to script what to say, I mean, now we're all hiring copywriters for our emails. Who who, who knew that was ever going to happen, right? But it's really the verbiage that inspires the emotion. And so I've always said, you know, and I, there's an incredible story about a gentleman who was a New York bestseller, had wrote multiple New York bestsellers, 
and they all hit the top and he wrote this book and it didn't, it was a complete flop. And his publishing house who paid him a lot of money said, go do a rewrite, right? You, you need to rewrite this, like, whoop, you know, didn't happen. So he went away, didn't change one word in his book, but he went and changed the cover. And that book went to New York bestselling status, didn't change a word. So sometimes it's just changing things slightly. And I find in the world of digital marketing, that clarity and understanding um, found foundationally on what it is and then knowing what it is you want to do with that digital marketing experience and how to do it right really requires an expert. I mean, there's places in your business that you can probably fly by the seat of your pants for a while. Um, and then there comes a time where it starts to get confusing. And again, living in the world of entrepreneurship in vast, you know, like I have a client right now who's cutting his first album. I have a client right now who's in network marketing. I have a client right now who's in, who's becoming an author. I have a, so it doesn't really matter what your sector, marketing is a major piece in that. So I had the pleasure of meeting Melissa and I, I believe we met through the world of social, if I remember correctly, through social marketing. Um, and I have been kind of hanging around and making the delve in with this woman in terms of digital marketing for a while now, honestly, probably a year and a half or something like that. And I've watched her, she was an expert before, but even for me, I went from like having someone who ran my marketing, we used to call them creative directors. I had a creative director in my company and really it was a whole different ball game to what creative director is now and creative marketing. So she's an expert in this. She's got an incredible story herself. She is an entrepreneur herself, which I think is a very important thing when you're supporting entrepreneurs. So she's got that inspiring story. Um, her business is vast. She has a multitude of, of clients as well. So her experience is deep. And um, she is going to be hanging out with us for a while, you guys. She's going to come on and help you. And you know what? It's not like, hey, you know, buy this, get this. You know, you're just showing up on the, on, on the, the podcast and you're going to get it for free. There's no, you know, download the 15 tips, you know, happening at the end of the podcast, okay? So this isn't a sales funnel. This is education free just for you. And she has graced us and cut out her schedule. Um, at least for the next six months, you're going to be able to follow and listen to Melissa talk about digital marketing. And then if you want to reach out to her in the meanwhile to get more information and clarity, then absolutely please do. So um, that's a long introduction. I don't normally take that kind of introduction, but I'm super excited to have an expert come on and really um, not only share information for everybody's sake, but also being inspired by her as an entrepreneur. So Melissa, please welcome yourself to the show and, and uh, introduce yourself. Maybe give us a little bit of background about what made you decide to be an entrepreneur. Sure, thanks Deb. I am so excited to be here. Um, this is going to be such an amazing series. Like you said, this is a pitch-free zone. I am here to simply help other entrepreneurs get some clarity on their digital marketing. And we would love everybody's feedback after the show as well. If there's other things you would like us to dig into, give us all the ideas, give us all of your questions, and we will make sure that we bring the maximum amount of value to you as entrepreneurs on this series that we have coming up. So um, I guess I'll share a little bit about uh, first what my company does. So we are a full service done for you marketing agency. Um, so we help coaches and consultants and personality based businesses. Um, we also have branches that work with e commerce brands and also local businesses like brick and mortar businesses doing local lead generation. Um, so at this point in our business, um, I would say that um, a large majority of our clients are coaches, consultants, and personally based businesses. And that's actually where we started. And then due to demand and our team's expertise grew, we opened it up to help other types of businesses as well. Um, so we specialize in the full A to Z comprehensive marketing ex experience. So this is for everything from building your list, sales funnels, copywriting, Facebook ads, Google ads, um, even coaching on webinars, which is what we're going to be talking about today. Um, yeah, and uh, social media, so posting on the different platforms. So we focus on that comprehensive experience because although it seems really complex, you really don't want to do things piecemeal because a lot of times, you know, people will think, well, if I just make a couple of posts on Facebook or Instagram, then 
my stuff's just going to fly off the shelf or I'm going to sell. But it's actually not true. It, it, you really, you have to take an approach where you're coming at it from all angles uh, to truly be successful online right now. As we all know, it is very competitive. Like you said, you have everyone from the ages of 15 to 70, you know, pursuing entrepreneurship in the online space. So it is important to stand out, um, but it's, it's not it's not that difficult if you know how to do it. Um, so I got started. Um, I had a very long career um, managing international clinical trials. Um, it was it was great, you know, but the problem was I didn't have the time freedom that I wanted. The commute was long. I think I was commuting about three hours per day. Uh, I think the pivotal moment for me was one day when I was in my office. And one of my colleagues uh, was talking about her daughter's birthday party. And then she was asking me about my daughter's birthday and how old she was. And we had the conversation. We talked about my daughter's age. And then I remember turning around and looking at this photo I had on my desk of my daughter's birthday party. And the number, the candle on her cake was the number that I had just told that person how old she was, if that makes sense. But that picture was taken over a year ago. <laughs> So I did not know how old my daughter was. And I realized I have completely given my life to, you know, building somebody else's business. And um, aside from that, um, it was also competitive academically. So I was not only working full time commuting, I was also constantly upgrading uh, my education. So I was, I spent my entire life at work, school or on the road, and I missed out on so many moments in my daughter's life. So uh, something, a, a switch kind of flipped for me at that point. And I started looking into all sorts of different ways to make money, right? Like you said, everyone online seems to be doing it. So I thought, well, if anyone can do it, then I can do it too. Um, but after a whole lot of research, I looked into a whole bunch of different options. What I kept coming back to was that, you know, whether I want to sell something on um, Amazon, like start an e-commerce brand or something like that, no matter what it was, I realized I kept getting so far and then I would get stuck at the point where I'm like, after I develop this product, I invest all this money, all this time into doing that. How are people going to know that my product or service exists? I had no idea how to answer that question. So I stopped right there and that's when I became interested in marketing. And the more that I learned, the more I realized, you know what, no matter what business you have, what you wanna do, you have to have solid marketing behind your business. Or even if maybe, you know, miraculously you have a, a, a couple of quick hit sales from your friends or family, you are not gonna build a sustainable income unless you really understand it and you know how to, how to use it for your specific offer, whether it's a product or service. Um, so that's really what got me interested. Um, the, the time freedom, you know, wanting more time with my family, my daughter. I didn't want to miss those moments. Um, yeah, I guess, yeah. I guess that's it. Yeah, yeah, no, and here we are. I mean, like I said, a lot of people have those pivotal moments, whatever they are, your back's against the wall, you have an epiphany, someone, you know, someone um, passes in your life and you're thinking life's too short, you have that thought process or you see other people aspiring in your career like in your in your sector and you're like what are they doing but I'm not doing what have they nailed down right um marketing is literally how the door gets opened in a business so let's dig down a little bit so let's talk about webinars because webinars are a classic form uh, like people tend to know what a webinar is per se we know you know the world of zoom has gotten on but like I was sharing earlier I think because there's been so many people use the same word with different meanings. Let's just clarify, like, look, and I know if you're out there and you're cranking on webinars, you're going to think this is ridiculous that some people wouldn't know what a webinar is, but that's define. I think that's a big part of this digital world mm -hmm. marketing is defining what something is and what something isn't right. Because there's so many different platforms, so many different ways. Someone's like, Oh my gosh, you know, check me out. All my stuff's on a YouTube channel. And I'm like, hey, go to my website. And someone's like, hey, websites are dead. You need to have a TikTok account, you know. So what is a webinar? What are the benefits of having a webinar? And I know that we're going to talk a little, dig a little bit in there. So, so just kind of share with us. And I know, you know what, just to get really specific, we wrote some really concrete questions that we knew that the market needed to hear. So just, you know, what is a, what is a webinar? What's the purpose of a webinar? 
Yeah, so, so to really bring it back to the basics, um, if you think about um, the term webinar outside of a marketing context, so outside of marketing, a webinar, we've all been on them. It could be, for example, um, like a training, if, if, if you're slot a nine to five or something like that. They probably, you've probably been on a webinar where it was a training to upgrade your education. So what a webinar usually is, is it is one person, the subject matter expert, um, who is leading this online. Um, it's, it's on video, so similar to a Zoom, they're leading this online and people are registering and they're joining to learn something from the person who is hosting the webinar. So um, outside of the marketing context, usually it is a, a training or something like that. Now, where the structure of the webinar slightly changes in terms of marketing is you are, you are still, you are asking people to come to your webinar. The goal is still to deliver huge value but there, it is also a key marketing asset that you can use to connect with your potential customers or clients um, authentically. Um, they're there, they're meeting you, you're sharing your brand story, um, talking about you know, how you got from where you were until where you are now. And then you're also using the webinar to invite them to the next step in your sales funnel or sales process. We can use those words kind of synonymously. Um, and that is the key difference. Whereas when you're attending a webinar in a different context, when it's not part of a marketing system, usually there is not that sort of call to action at the end where you're invited to the next step to learn more about the product. That's perfect. And I think that's the key piece in terms of a webinar. And a lot of people have tapped into a webinar like, oh, I see this on Facebook. I'm going to click through. And the next thing you know, they're in a, they're in a webinar not realizing that's what it is. And they're like, oh, okay. And then there's always that download the next PDF or go to that next step, or this is a free webinar. And now the course is this much. So it is very much can be um, that first step of people actually getting to know you. So I know you're going to tell us a little bit about that. So um, thank you for defining that. And so um, the process of getting people to sign up for your, for your webinar, we talked about here about, you know, what what can someone do so they're like i want to do a webinar so you know how do we how do we do that and then how do we get people to sign up for that webinar yeah so there's there's a few ways that you can do it um we our specialty is paid advertising and for me it is and i understand not everyone might have the budget to go with the paid advertising route at the at the very beginning but that is truly the fastest way to fill up registrations now if you do not have uh, a budget for paid advertising think about what sort of um what sort of audience you have already so maybe you have a facebook group that you've been nurturing maybe you have an email list um, maybe you have a blog that you're active in. So there are lots of ways where you can get people to attend if you have an existing audience. Um, if you don't have an existing list, it can be a little bit difficult. Um, and so paid advertising to get people to sign up, it, it, can, it can really help that for you. Um, but before you even start to think about getting people to your webinar, um, you really want to make sure that you're taking the time to really elaborate your webinar and hit on some key points, practice it, practice. And definitely your pitch, you know, once you figure out, okay, what is the next step going to be? Practice that a lot up front too, because once you get people to your webinar, that's step one, right? But the, the goal here is to deliver huge value. That is why they're there. And webinars done well when they put value first, authenticity first, connecting with the client first. Those are the ones that convert or in other words, make sales like crazy. And I know for some of us, we've probably been on those poorly done webinars where you're like, oh great, they're gonna teach me this and that. You sit on the webinar and right from square one, they're just trying to you know, shove a product or service and sell, sell, sell. And it's just, that is not the way to do it. So yes, yeah, I've been on those where they give, they give you 15 minutes of their accolades. Right. Yeah. I mean, I think I want to I want to know who am I listening to? And that's great. There was obviously something they did in their verbiage marketing or something that caught my attention. And I'm like, yeah, I wouldn't mind learning a little bit more about that. Um, 
And, or there's those webinars that you're like, oh, I'd love to do that in a couple of hours or in a couple of days. And they're like, the webinar starts in, you know, 15 minutes. And you're like, I, what did, you're not in my schedule. You know what I mean? But then you get on there and it's this, you know, 15 minute of boasting. And I'm, I kind of check out. I'm like, I want to know who you are for sure. I want to know that you have the credentials to teach me something that I'm going to implement. But, um, and then I think we all know. Like we all know if I'm going on to a free webinar, they're going to offer me something after. And I, and I think that that's fair. They're giving information. So um, they're giving you something of value, but you're absolutely right. We've all been on those webinars. So if you were going to take, so we all kind of know what it is that we have and what we bring to the table. Um, if someone's starting to do their first kind of webinars, um, so should they do pull some research, ask questions from friends, uh, what, what do you suggest in terms of how to pick some great topics? Yeah, so I would think about it. It really goes back to um, if, if you haven't done some work yet on figuring out who is your ideal client, who is your ideal customer, that is really the foundation of all of your marketing assets. So if you're right at the beginning, I would sit down and really think about this. What problem does your product or service solve? And who is the person that needs that solution? Think about that and then write out, I would say probably about write out four points. What are their major pain points, right? Um, I'm just gonna use a product for an example, like somebody who needs a new blender. Um, maybe it's because they've wanted to make smoothies for a long time, but they just don't have the tools to do it. And they're sick of using their like tiny immersion blender. They want to upgrade to this big, huge one because it's going to make their life easy. Like, um, pain points, like they're, the, they're trying to make their, you know, shake and it's just not working. It's chunky. You gross, right? Yeah. yeah, <laughs> or yeah. Maybe a more, uh, uh, a more relevant example. So maybe a business owner is, they, they, they really want to grow their business. They want to grow a team, but one of their major blocks is they have this mindset issue that is stopping them from being able to let go and to delegate. That's probably a more appropriate example. Um, so things like that. Think of four of those major pain points. Why are they stuck where they are right now? Which is usually also the answer to why did you develop your product or service in the first place? Right. And once you answer those questions, that should give you a really good foundation for exactly what you want to talk about. Um, cause you want, you want to address those points. You want to offer solutions to those points. Awesome. That's great. That's great. So, okay. So our question was, what can we do to make sure they attend? That was, you know, so you, you've got this, you have an idea who your client is, your avatar is, you know, your value, you know, what you can bring, you know, you know what it is that you want to say, and you know what it is you want that next step to be. So the, I want to, you know, I want to inspire people I'm looking for people that want to, to do a side business. You know, that's, I, I like, I, I want to attract people that want to do a side gig. I've got a side gig opportunity. I want to offer that to them. So you know what it is. And then now uh, you're like, okay, how do I get them there? How do I get them there? And you yes. talked a little bit about that. So how do you, how, you know, what makes it, I always call it, what makes it sexy? What, what, what draws people and goes, yeah, I want to, I want to listen to you. Yeah, exactly. And I have some great pointers for you guys today. So whether you were able to um, get registrants through paid advertising or through your existing audiences, like your, your email list or your blog or your Facebook groups, whatever it is, you've put together this awesome webinar. You're like, okay, people are going to love this. I am so excited to share all of these golden nuggets with them. The most disappointing thing is when you get on there to deliver your awesome webinar, nobody shows up. What gives? <laughs> what <laughs> happened? <laughs> okay, nobody wants that. So there are, there are a few tips that a lot of people aren't using. And when I say these to you guys, you're going to be like, that is a no brainer, but you would be shocked at how many people are not incorporating these simple tweaks to their marketing for their webinar. And they are losing out on attendees, right? And if you want to make sales, you need people to show up in the first place, right? <laughs> so <laughs> one point um, that you mentioned, Dev, uh, which is, is perfect for what I'm about to mention, like you said, sometimes you will register for webinars and then you get this 15 minute reminder and you're like, okay, you're not even on my calendar. When you get people to register, you want to make sure that whatever you're using, if you're using a funnel platform or whatever it is, that you set it up so that they are getting a calendar appointment set to their calendar when they register. Um, there are so many, um, so many webinars where you opt in, 
the email will say, okay, congrats, you're in. And it gives you a list of instructions. It says, um, make sure that you add this to your calendar so you don't miss it. You know how many people will actually take that action to add it to their calendar? Not a whole lot. <laughs> okay. So you want to have, you, you want to have just based on experience, people won't do that. You want to make it easy for them, right? Yeah. So you want something that triggers that that calendar appointment is going to be sent to their calendar. And not a lot of people use this, but it is amazing because it's the same thing as if you set up a meeting with somebody that you know closely, you're going to get the reminders. It's going to prompt them to show up the, you know, and you can include the agenda in the little notes, the link, everything is right there. Make it super easy for people. So at the time of your webinar, all they have to do is click on their little calendar reminder notification and off they go. They're there. Great. Great. So they're just, they're just clicking and it automatically populates that. Now, um, so when I was talking earlier, there's, so there's the webinars that you want to do that you're like, okay, I find, and I don't know if this is, I find, I, I, and I understand that they do it. They're like, you click it. They want you in that moment. Right. But they're literally like, I'll click that. I want to join the webinar. And it's literally starting in 10 minutes. And so, and then I don't ever get a chance to, I can't do it in 10 minutes. Like I'm getting in the shower, you know what I mean? So, mm -hmm. um, what do you say to that? Because there's, and then there was, there was no other option. And I was like, oh, so I just didn't, I just didn't do it. Yeah. So depending on what platform you use. Okay. So if, if there was no other option, so there are, that this does go back to the kind of platform you use. So one, the kind of, um, that the options that they have available for how you want to set up your registration. Um, right. What I will normally say is, so, so those are kind of last minute or just in time webinars where usually actually they're simulated live, they're pre-recorded, um, yeah. which is fine. You guys can also do simulated live too. I just like to say, as long as you have like a live moderator, someone who's there who can actually answer questions, then people are generally fine with the experience it still converts just as well as live. Um, but yeah, you, you ideally want to start promoting your webinar between uh, seven and 14 days. You want to give people some time. And there is another reason why you want to allow enough time for people um, to sign up and have some time to get to know you before the actual webinar date. So another tip I have for you guys is whatever platform you're using, it's important. Like we're all about automation <laughs> media, right? Um, so set up some scheduled emails that will send out once people register for you, send them an email, get them into a sequence. It's going to send them an email every day, not a reminder about the webinar, building a relationship with you, add value, get them to get to know you. So by the time your webinar comes up, they're intrigued. They're like, you know what? I want to meet this person. I can't wait for this. Right? Like build that excitement um, and the kind of content it will go back to those pain points, right? Talking about it, maybe talking about, you know, how you've helped change someone else's life. Um, again, not pitching, but just talking about that, building the relationship. So yeah, those just in time ones that you're talking about, um, those are usually not very effective because like you said, you're like, well, I have, I have stuff to do. Um, I don't know who you are. Like, is, is mm -hmm. it, is this worth my time right now? We don't really know. So those are actually not the best option. You want that, that window of registration between seven, I wouldn't say longer than 14 days, but between seven and 14 is a, is a nice, um, a, a nice time frame. Well, and it was good to hear you say, yeah, it was very interesting. I put myself through that process and then, um, I really wanted the information. So as I was putting my makeup on, I was watching part of it, but then I had to go. And then they started, they got me on this, you know, now they're sending me all these emails and I literally sent back to two emails. Hey, can you send me the initial recording? I'm interested in your service. It's got, it's a, it's a publishing thing. And, um, but I didn't get a chance to watch the whole email. Nope. They just keep sending me emails. No one's responding, um, from a real person. And I was like, okay, you know, you do you, but, um, and they, so they, they're, they're trying to let me, <laughs> I'm like, I've sent two emails going, Hey, can you just send me the original so it's very interesting, right? I mean, I think we all know that things are, can be, you know, artificial intelligence or whatever it is. And I think for the most part, we're okay with it. We understand that mm -hmm. they're not going to send an email just to me, but when you reply and someone replies live, someone needs to be replying live back and getting that person what they need. Cause why would I buy her services now, no matter how much she keeps dropping the price that's been interesting really? as well. So, um, okay. So you do this webinar and I love that you said that 
whether it's pre-recorded or live, it's not making much of a difference in terms of, so that's really helpful for people to know and being able to duplicate yourself. Yeah. Yeah. And usually when, um, when we're speaking to our clients about those two options, um, generally the ones who will decide, because, because like I said, in terms of sales, in terms of us doing our job and getting them a return, um, it doesn't matter. Like we, we, the data shows it does not matter significantly, whether it is live or it's a simulated live, as long as you do have people on the live chat to answer questions, or like you said, get back to people with questions about the service or product. Um, you know, it, it, it's a different story if you're kind of running people to a recording that says it's going to be live, but then you don't have anyone to engage when the questions come up. Um, so usually the people who will choose to do a live webinar are people who usually they are experienced speakers and they feed off the energy of engaging with the live crowd themselves. So mm -hmm. for them, they feel that they will deliver the webinar better if it's 100% live for them. Right. Um, and now that being said, even when they get to that point, a lot of times we end up using their really high converting live versions. We end up converting it to a simulated live anyways, because as much as they love speaking live, <laughs> how many times are you going to say, <laughs> like, how many times are you going to do the same webinar again and again and again? They get to a point where they're like, I'm going to invest my time in my business, more leverage activities. This is running like a well-oiled machine. Go for it and make it simulated. Right, right, right. Perfect. So here's another question. Um, so I just want to repeat that for people. So in the question of how do I get people to attend and yeah. I don't want to sit there by myself and we've all, even before the world of digital age, I mean, I've taught lectures and, you know, seminars and sometimes they're full and sometimes they're not. And, you know, you have a small attendance or a big attendance, really knowing what you deliver is what you said, like having those, knowing what you deliver, knowing who your audience is, having time beforehand, how much time before your webinar goes live, should you start your marketing? Like um, one week, two weeks, a month, like? Uh, yeah, the, the, the sweet spot is, so if you're doing, if, if you're doing paid advertising, like I would say you could even do about like seven days before um, because okay. you're getting a lot of registrations really quickly. Um, it's between the seven and 14 day mark. Okay, seven and 14 days. Okay, so now, the next question it is, you know, everybody wants to know. So let me just tell you, what kind of show up rate are we aiming for and how do we calculate that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so show up rate. So um, <laughs> even with these, and, and I have a couple of, <laughs> and I have a couple more tips for you guys too. So um, even if you put together something really, really great, I do want to set the expectation here um, for everyone is that 100% of the people who registered for your webinar are not going to show up. Now, <gasps> just because, right? <laughs> just because um, that all of them don't show up, it doesn't mean that that was a fail, that something is wrong. No. So realistically, out of the people that registered, you're aiming. So a really great industry standard show up rate is about 40%. So if this is so 40% of attendees, so um, whoever, so attendees, divided by registrants times 100 gives you per, your per, percentage to calculate that. Um, okay. So that's where you're, so 40% is really great. Um, if you end up achieving more than 40%, then you need to come work for me because. <laughs> <laughs> so for, so for, the, for people that are starting off in their first, their first, you know, maybe they're, they're in their first year, um, what would be a, because here's what I think is interesting. Um, People will say, oh, I, I sent it out to my whole crowd. I sent it out to my whole audience. And I'm like, how big is your audience? Like, are you talking friends and family? Did you do one post on Facebook? Did you know only 5% of people on Facebook saw that post? Like, yeah. and, the, and, and so the assumption is when people send it out to social media, that it's going to everyone that they know, but you and I both know that's not happening. So um, when someone says, so yeah, if you've got 10 people registered, four is like rock star. I find that people on the are not realizing just how much this needs to go out. Can you talk to that? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, so when we are um, like when we are running paid advertising, like our promotions are going out to like millions of people, millions right. of people. That is how big the audience is, and that's why we we 
prefer that method to get people onto webinars um, because it is so fast and you actually need um, a pretty big pool to get a lot of people on the webinar. Um, if you are not going that route, um, I would say like you, you, you want to have a pretty big list or if you have audiences across multiple platforms or blog posts, um, really try and maximize and use every channel that you have. The other thing that you can do, um, if you know anyone else in the business, like other entrepreneurs, you can ask them to support you by advertising to their own list. And this is something, um, maybe you guys even received these emails from, you know, some of the, um, mm -hmm. like most, most, most popular motivational speakers and stuff. They do this all the time, <laughs> right? Yes. Their marketing strategy They'll say, Hey, like come join my friend so-and-so on this thing. It's going to be amazing. This is why I love it. This is why I think it's going to be so cool to join here. So that's something else that you can do. If you do have a, even a few people send it to anyone, I, but as long as their kind of brand is in alignment with you, right? Because this is all about like something we prioritize. It's authenticity. You want to connect with the right people <laughs> authentically. So just you know, pick and yeah. choose who, who you're going to ask to do that for you. But that's another um, little trick that you can use to expand your audience that isn't really your own. Right. And are people doing things like, um, so do they, they do that for the, each, each other? And maybe, you know, if someone comes from their circle, they're giving them a bit of a kickback or I'm going to promote you, you're going to promote me. Mm -hmm. um, and what do you think about in terms of webinars? It's okay for people to start small and get practiced but i would think that one of the things they would need to know is where they're going to take people from there so yeah exactly two, two questions like people are doing free webinars but there's also doing people that there's also people doing webinars that charge correct uh they they are um in in my opinion if you if you are running paid advertising the webinars that are free do work the best for the end objective so your end objective, because sales, sales is a number game, is a numbers game, right? You get yeah. more people in for a free webinar. And so you have more people to pitch to at the end of your webinar. A paid webinar is actually what we consider to be a mini offer. Um, so it's mm. actually more of like a product funnel, whereas you're not getting as much of a return, believe it or not, because everyone, I think they're like, well, if I can do a mini offer, then I can cover my ad spend expenses and this and that, but... <laughs> The, really the, the way that I do suggest to go is to do the free webinar because on the back end, you, you stand to get a much better return. Um, cause it's, it's about, it's about the long game. You got to think about that kind of perspective, right? Right. Mini offers, like even for a dollar, you know, if you have a mini offer, that's a dollar right up front. If people have never seen you before, they don't know your brand. This is their first interaction with you. People will not even usually, I'm sorry, but let's spend a dollar on your product if they don't know you. So it's all about building that relationship first. And that's why those like, like free, free guides or free webinar, especially because it's a lot more time spent with you, it builds that relationship. Right. And um, I'm assuming that you can talk to it when someone does a webinar, they should be prepared with their next step. And what are some, what are some in your opinion, what are some successful next steps? Hmm. Yeah, so this actually comes down to what your offer is. Um, so for um, so for like coaches and consultants who have one-to-one uh, -one, um, coaching programs, let's say it's a high ticket uh, program. Mm -hmm. So high ticket, we usually consider anything around like 1500 and more. Um, this okay. could also be to apply for a $50,000 a year mastermind or like right. a $25,000 weekend retreat, whatever it is, anything kind of beyond that price point. Okay. Um, the call to action is usually to book a call. Okay. And you can, I mean, like discovery call, strategy call, whatever you want to call it. Like we, we like to use some more creative names in that, um, but get people on the phone. Uh, it can be with you. Um, a lot of people will end up with sales teams if they're kind of actively running these offers all the time. Um, and now if you have a product that is a low ticket offer, usually those are um, like, like courses or memberships and things like that. Um, so the call to action for those ones, you're actually going to pitch and put a link for them to sign up or join that program right then and there. Okay. And when you say product now, there's a lot of people that sell products. They sell jewelry, they sell health and wellness products, they sell um, clothing, they sell, you know, uh, pictures. Or, 
And so anything that's under that 1500, you're, you're putting something for them to just literally go join. Or you, it's like a website link or a, or a product link or. Yeah. So, um, yeah. so yeah, good. Um, good point. And I'll just, um, I'll just take a moment to clarify that. So uh, when we're talking about webinars, this usually works best for people in the coaching consulting space um, right. who have a, a product like a membership. Um, or something like that. Now, e-commerce strategies, um, like selling, um, like, yeah, like shakes or, um, you know, jewelry or whatever it is, those are a little bit different strategies where you wouldn't typically use a webinar for. So um, I think that's an important question. And um, that's, that's kind of who really benefit from, from doing a free webinar to pitch their, to pitch their offers. Right. Um, well, as we're talking, if that person has um, kind of an expertise in that area, maybe they're a jewelry maker, and, and, and they want to tell people something really cool about jewelry or the history of the jewelry, jewelry and give them that information, then they could, you know, send them to their website because now they've built a, a bit of a rapport, something like that. So that's a that's a little bit different than a full. I mean, it's information, but maybe not a webinar per se. Yeah. So for, yeah. for e-commerce and, and things like that, it, it depends. Like if that if that same person wanted to teach people how to start their own jewelry business. Right. Yes, you're the webinar, pitch that, get on the phone with me. We'll see if you're a good fit for our three month mentorship program to get you from zero to selling your, you know, first set of jewelry in three months. Do right, that. right, right. Um, okay. But actually, um, usually like, uh, like a, a, a video, like shorter video strategy. Um, it's kind of a different marketing. Yeah. <laughs> um, so we're going to talk about, we'll talk about that on yeah. another class. This is totally yeah. marketing. So I wanted to, yeah. to just end and see if there was anything that we didn't cover. Yeah. So how far in advance should we be promoting? And we kind of talked about that. Yeah. You're talking with us two weeks. Mm -hmm. um, is there anything else in terms of webinars as we wrap up our, you know, class here? Yay. Look at that. You guys, you're learning so much about digital marketing. Is there anything other about digital marketing or webinars that are helpful for people that are a never done them B are in the middle of them and looking for a better conversion or C rocking them? And um, any, any tweak strategies that you have for anyone in that? I know it's a big vast, it's that, you know, 17 to 70 kind of deal, but yeah. um, is there anything else you want to share with us before we sign off today? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, in terms of, in terms of getting people to show up, I do have a couple more um, yeah, yeah. That, that you guys can use. Um, um, so your, your nurture sequence we talked about, but another thing you can do once you have been promoting and contacting them by email for about seven days, if you're using a platform that allows it, incorporating a last minute SMS reminder to the person's mm. phone, that can have a big impact. It's kind of the same idea of you're going to have a calendar appointment. They can click right on it. Same with SMS. That can really help to get people there. Um, another thing that you can do is to, um, promote that you're going to have a Q and a session at the end of the webinar, right? Um, some people really like knowing that they'll have an opportunity to speak to that expert who's going to be hosting the webinar. Um, and then finally, you can also offer a free bonus to people who stay until the end of the webinar. Um, you can mention, um, Mention in your nurture sequence and the day of your reminder that you will be offering this to people, but don't spill all the details of what it's going to be, right? Like you said, we want to make it sexy. We want to get people excited. So just let them know, you guys, for showing up, say thank you. I'm going to give you this awesome, super valuable gift, um, whatever makes sense for your business. And um, yeah, and that, that can help. And I think, yeah, I think those were kind of the key tips that I had um, for everybody today for, for webinars, but yeah, any, any other questions or anything we can, um, yeah, just let me know and we'll cover it. Yeah, absolutely. Well, the, people will send them in and we'll talk about it. Um, because mm -hmm. you're going to be with us for a while. We're going to be, you know, digging deep into this digital marketing because really we want everyone to have an easier way of success. And it's, it's been a very engulfing, I always say kind of pre, you know, uh, flooding for the prefrontal cortex when people start to get into the world of marketing now, because there's just so many different, ways to market. And then also there's so many different ways that people label things. So from a web, the last thing that I wanted to ask though, from a marketing standpoint, um, from a best benefit standpoint, some people do, you know, some people go out and they're like, Oh, I've done three, three webinars and it hasn't worked. I've done, you know, webinars. So obviously it's how you do, it's a, how you do everything. I mean, it's not how many you do, it's how you do it. But if you were going to look at kind of someone's 
best shot at success? How often should people be offering webinars? I would say um, until your conversion rate is where it should be. Um, right. And so usually out of the people who show up, um, about 2% will take that next step. So again, it's a numbers game. Um, some people, like you can do a lot better than that in terms of conversions, but for some who are just starting out, I would say until you get at least 2% of the people who attend um, buying your products, keep keep doing it. And then just keep okay. kind of aiming to get better. Um, and also a lot of the platforms where you can host your webinars, they provide analytics too. It shows like, where did people fall off? And that can give you huge clues as to where your webinar needs improvement. Watch it back. What happened? <laughs> did you maybe touch on a subject that they didn't find relevant? Did you bring up something that people just didn't like? Did, like, did your energy start to kind of falter and then people just tuned out? So right. I yeah, also that's a great yeah. insight. That's great information. And how long should an average webinar be for highest level of success? What are, what are people's, you know, people like, oh, people's attention spans only 60, <laughs> you know, seconds or two minutes. And I've read some very good marketing books that say, if the information is good and if the content is relevant, people will watch to the end of the movie. You know what yeah. I mean? Like people watch movies for two hours, people. So they'll listen to you. But what's the sweet spot that you would say if someone's looking at doing um, a webinar that people want to listen to you? <laughs> So it's definitely about quality over quantity. Don't be afraid of it being too long. Um, like some of the best converting webinars that we've had, I think they're at least two hours. Wow. Two hours. Yeah. Wow. That's a, I'm shocked. I was yeah. like, wow. I know. <laughs> I know. Yeah. And a lot of people are like, oh, webinars are dead. Webinars don't work. People don't have the attention span. Like you said, think people will watch people watch a movie right to the end is they're intrigued and it's and it's you've done a good job they will stay to the end I mean so again but it's about quality so don't try and fill up two hours just because yes. you, that you need to you don't but if your information genuinely takes up that much time um then take us take that time um wow. I would say definitely though like no shorter than 45 minutes. Like if it's, if it's shorter than 45 minutes, I feel like you probably haven't done a good job of connecting with your audience enough. Like it's, it's kind of difficult to, you know, do your introduction, talk about your brand story, talk about them, why they're there um, and deliver the training that you wanted to give them value. And then also talk about your next step. Um, or offer whatever it is. So I think anything shorter for shorter than 45 minutes for me is really, it, I, I, I wouldn't say it has a good chance of converting. Like we don't usually run webinars that are that short. That was my shocking moment. That was my shocking <laughs> moment because I've been on, I've been on shorter. It does leave you with that feeling like satisfied, not satisfied. You're still kind of, that is a shocker for me. Wow. That's, that's, that's great news for me. See, you're all having your shocking moment. I'm having mine now. <laughs> um, so look, we're almost at our hour and you guys are going to get a lot more hours with Melissa and, um, Melissa, thank you so much for coming on. This is such a critical piece. It's one thing for inspiration and motivation, but I think it was really important to share with our audience. Some of the, you know, some of the things that are going to take that because, you know, inspiration and motivation can keep you going to a certain point. And then the fundamentals of long-term success is kind of, if you want to use the word blender of many different things, right? As someone who uses one who finally upped and got like the, you know, the thousand dollar Vitamix or whatever. So um, I went from the, I'm like, oh, she's telling my story. Um, so uh, and yeah, I did, I did watch a presentation and they told me I could make ice cream. I've never made ice cream, but I could. <laughs> so I bought it. Um, anyways, long story short, thank you so much for coming on. This has been so helpful. Um, we're so grateful and we're looking forward to learning more. Um, Melissa will be coming on. And if you want more information or you're like, I don't want to wait to her next, you know, next time that she's here teaching and sharing. Melissa, can you just share with people how to reach you and contact you and, and get some information? Hmm. Yeah, sure. So you can visit our website. Uh, it's meteor.net, M-E-D-I-O-R.net. Um, I'd also love to hear any feedback directly. So you're also welcome to send me an email to melissa at meteor.net, M-E-L-I-S-S-A at meteor.net. Okay. Well, thank you very much. And look at you, best audience ever. 
Um, we got, uh, we've had some great shows. Um, I just want to kind of highlight a couple of things. If you would love to come on to the show, if you have something to share and you're an entrepreneur, entrepreneur, you know, you're doing a project, you got something cool going on and you got that spunk, reach out. I know you have been and continue to reach out and let's get you on the show. For those of you that are looking for some kind of sexy media, you know, we've got the, we've got the entrepreneurial planner launching in September. And you guys know, if you want to put a quote in there, you have an opportunity to do that. Reach out to me by email at deb at debdrummond.com. And we will talk about getting your quote that goes from paper to live digital, super fun. You know, you can hover your phone over your quote and it, you pop up on people's phone and you can't do a two hour webinar on there. But you can do a really, really strong two and a half hour impression of meet me, I want to meet you, inspirational quote for the planner. And there's some other really cool collaborative book um, projects coming up on the pipeline. If you happen to be a woman, um, because there's a really incredible woman's book, not to take out the other half of the, of the uh, population, but we happen to have a big women's book coming up in December, 262 women um, collaborating that are entrepreneurs, entrepreneurs, media, and creatives. If you want to be... Um, featured in that book, please reach out. We've got some great stuff going on. Thank you for being the best audience ever. Melissa, thank you so much. I look forward to our next class together. Thank you for that. And um, as always, everybody be well, and we will see you soon.